Say we're proving corresponding angles are congruent, and I'm first going to start by creating some corresponding angles. I'm going to start with a line and put a point up, and then I'm going to use the parallel line tool to create two parallel lines. Now the corresponding angles need a transversal, so I'm going to put a point on this object and create a transversal. And I'm going to put another point down here. These are a sample of the corresponding angles, would be this angle is corresponds to this angle, and this is what we're going to be proving. Okay, we're going to prove that this angle, I'm going to just put it right up here, BDF is congruent to ECD. So these are corresponding angles. Now there's going to be a complicated proof and a simple proof. They prove it many ways. They prove it using alternate exterior angles. They prove it using um, same side interior angles. They prove it simple and more complicated. I'm going to do a simple version that will be totally acceptable for 3.03 and a more complicated version that's a very formal proof that will help you in your assessment. So let's begin. I'm going to take away this pen stroke right here and go straight to my um, geometry view and move my graphics a little bit and we're going to start with a very simple proof first. And I will start by um, labeling. Um, actually I'm going to go back here actually and I'm going to remove. See these things? You can, you can um, remove or just unhighlight things that you've measured before. So we'll go back over here to my geometry view and we're going to label with my pen. One, and I'm going to label this as angle two and angle three. And what we're going to be doing today is two proofs and side by side and we're going to be proving the corresponding angles theorem. that corresponding angles are, th are congruent and what we're proving is that the met that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Okay. So let's do the simple way and then we'll do the more complicated way. And they're going to be very similar. And there's more than this ways because you can just do vertical angles, alternate interior angles, substitution or transitive and you're done. But let's go this way. Statements and I think I'm missing an E in there. Yes, I am. Oops, that's not an E, that's a three statements. And now we're going to write down reasons. And if you do it this way on your test for 3.03, .03, that's great. First line of every proof is what's given. So we are given that line one and line two are, let me write this down, line one and line two are parallel and T is a transversal. So let's put all that in. It's going to be hard to fit all of that in there, but we'll find a way. And let me go back to this thing and I'm just going to put it like that so it goes into two lines. There we go. So we have to mark that. So we're going to have these two guys are parallel. And this is line one and this is line two and this is the transversal T. So let's start off by saying, let's go, I'm looking for this, um, definition of supplementary, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to put on my text view, and this is gonna be definition of supplementary angles. And what are my supplementary angles is that angle um, one and angle two add up to 180 degrees. So let me put that in um, with my text bar. Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees, and those are definition of supplementary angles. Next, angle 2 and angle 3 plus angle 3. Oops, I need to put an angle sign there. Sorry about that. Angle, angle 3 equals 180 degrees, and the reason why is those are same side interior angles. And the last line of the proof is, well, two more lines, is because they're equal to 180 degrees, they're equal to each other, and we can say that's a transitive or substitution property. This is a transitive property of equality or a substitution property. And then now we can say that angle, angle one 
plus angle 2. I'm really just making a lot of silly errors is equal to angle 2 plus angle 3. And because they're both equal to each other like that, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we're going to call that the subtraction property. And so then we subtract 2 from both sides so we can say that angle 1 is equal to angle 3 and this is what we're proving. It's congruent, it's important that we have that congruent side, angle 3. And that's what we're proving which is totally exciting. Bring this down here and end of the proof we're going to put our famous symbol up right here which is our pound sign. That is an awesome proof. Now we're going to do it a little bit more complicated the way they do it in the lessons on the quizzes so that you can succeed on these quizzes because their proof is going to be a lot longer and they're going to stretch it out so let me show you how they did this. State mints and then we're going to have reasons and we're given and we're given the same thing here so we're just write it in right here he keeps it keeps going to the move and so I keep forgetting to go back to the text bar alright so we're going to invent that line 1 and 2 are parallel and T and let's see T is a transversal we also are given one more thing if you really think about this let me write these down these these letters here F D and C are on th that same line. So let's write that down. Points F, D, and C are on the same line or um, on the same line which happens to be line T, the transversal. Transversal. Okay, good. Got it. So, and that's given. We'll write that down as given. Now, see it's already getting longer. In this one we're not going to just say that angle 1 and angle 2 are um, 180 degrees. We're going to do something a little bit more longer and we're going to say that the measure of angle FDC, FDC equals 180 degrees and the reason why that is true is because that is a definition of a straight angle. Now we're going to close that off and also by the angle addition By the angle addition postulate, we can say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals this whole measure of the straight angle. So let's write that down. So the measure of angle 1, angle 1 plus the measure of, um, oh I have to put an M there, measure of angle 2 equals the, the measure of angle FDC. So there. Now since they're both equal and FDC is also equal to 180 degrees, we can use the substitution property to say that what we have here, 1 and 2 add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to call that substitution or transitive. And they use substitution, so we're going to go by what's in the lessons. Substitution property. Now we're going to say that um, angle 1 and angle 2, the measure of angle plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Whew, that's a lot of lines just to get to there. Okay, so now next line is we're going to use the same side interior angles. theorem that says that the, this measure plus this measure equals 180 degree um, 180 degrees so let me write that down the me, we're going to put in measures measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees 
and now since they're both equal to each other you can use the substitution property to say that they're both equal to 180 degrees you can say that they're equal to each other by substitution um, substitution property of equality we can say that the measure of angle 2 measure and you can see this is exact ex exhausting and you don't have to do all this you can do the one on the left on your on your project angle measuring one plus angle two is equal to the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three there you got it now we're going to subtract angle two from both sides we're almost done. You got a little bit more to do. So we're going to hit down subtraction property. It would be good if I can spell. So we're going to hit subtraction property. We're going to subtract from both sides. And we're going to say the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. And this is not quite done yet. And then we're not done. We have one last line in here, and that is going to be called definition of congruence. And definition of congruence says that since they're equal, their measures are equal, then the angles are congruent. So our last angle, last line is what we're proving is that angle one, oops, I, I got some extra symbols in there. Angle one is congruent to angle three. And we're going to put it, we're going to move this down because I just put it in the wrong spot. And, and then we're going to put our big pound sign up here because we have proven something awesome. And let's put that in here. And I'm going to do, I'll be right back. I'm back because if you go back here, given, given, definition of strange angle, angle addition, substitution, this is how they did it in your, in your class. They may give you an exam where they take one of these lines out and you're going to be able to match it against here and figure out where it's different. And I hope this helps you and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much.